comes to mind when you think of Bangkok. For some people, it's the food, for some people, it's the nightlife, and for others, it's maybe something a bit more questionable. For me, being my first time in Bangkok, I had no idea what to expect, and so I uh, touched down in the Thai capital for two days. I had a very short time to spend there, and I was determined to make the most of it. To be honest with you, Bangkok is unlike any other Asian mega city that I've ever seen. And I've seen a few. I've been to Saigon, I've been to Manila, I've been to Tokyo, obviously I live in Seoul, but Bangkok is just on another level. The heat and the humidity just envelop you as soon as you walk outside. The energy hits you right away and there's this palpable electricity uh, in the air. For 24 hours, I weave my way through the city with my camera in hand, recording POV footage. So grab some snacks, get a drink, settle down and join me for a street photography, good old fashioned street photography POV video through the streets of Bangkok. This is a mega vlog covering areas like Siam, Grand Palace, Chinatown and the countless night markets that dot the city. My name is Stuart and I'm on a mission to document my journey as a a videographer and photographer using the Fujifilm ecosystem, sharing the gear and the settings that I use all while showing you how I spend my downtime here in South Korea. If you're new to the Fuji ecosystem or you're simply looking for creative inspiration, then be sure to hit like and subscribe as I share with you my creative process all while showing you the best that South Korea has to offer. Now, of course, this in this video i'm not in south korea i'm in bangkok and i started off this trip in siam which is basically like downtown bangkok it's the shopping district in the city and this was my first real foray into the belly of the beast there's no way to accurately really describe these shopping malls because they just kind of defy logic um they defy imagination there are these huge multi-story complexes packed with shops and restaurants and just teeming with people around this area for quite a while just kind of soaping up the vibes and the atmosphere and kind of almost felt a little bit dystopian uh, in a way but definitely futuristic at the same time. All my nighttime images I used the Neon Valvia recipe which I will link down below and all of these are straight out of camera no post processing involved whatsoever uh, shot on my Fujifilm XS10 Sigma 18-50mm uh, f2.8 along with a Kenko Black Mist filter number 5.
next day would see me visit the Grand Palace. Now the Grand Palace is basically a monument that was built in 1782 um, to serve as the residence, the quarters of the kings at the time of uh, Grand Siam, which from what I've read is the previous name of Thailand. It was built to provide a majestic and opulent space for the royal family at the time and although it's a major tourist attraction today it does have a lot of cultural and historical significance um, in the broader Thai history. Architecturally this place is also really just so unique and you know compared to the other palaces and temples that I've seen um, there's just a level of detail and ornateness that really captured my attention everything from the palace decorations to the uh, statues guarding the palace doors this was definitely a place that i enjoyed milling around in After the Grand Palace, I headed over to Chinatown, which is also a very historic area in Bangkok. Now this as well just felt like a completely different type of frantic, I don't know if it was the heat um, that kind of compounded the just the sheer atmosphere, but Chinatown in Bangkok is a barrage of sights and smells. This place is pretty crazy and I definitely recommend that you spend some time here if you find yourself in the Thai capital.
After a short afternoon break, I headed to one of the uh, night markets in the city, Jod Fair's night market, in search of some eats for my final night. Now this market, while it was really nice, it did feel a bit too pleasant, if that's uh, it makes any sense and dare i say it felt a bit gentrified this is of course compared to you know the regular uh, night markets or regular street markets that i was searching for on my trip Unfortunately, I was in luck because not too far from this uh, from this night market was the Pratunam night market. Now this, as soon as I got here, I could already feel that this just felt a lot more authentic uh, in terms of being the kind of night market experience that I was looking for. For sure, this area didn't perhaps have the polish of, you know, Jod Fair's night market, which I just come from, but, but the food was cheaper, the streets were busier, and the characters were a lot more interesting. I moseyed about here trying to soak in as much of the atmosphere as I could before heading back to my hotel. That is Bangkok in all its sweltering glory. It really is an assault on the senses. Uh, it's a cacophony of sounds. But when it comes to shooting street photography, I'm a firm believer that if you embrace chaos, then the chaos embraces you back and you manage to find really great moments within that chaos. Granted, I'll be honest, most of these are regular you know, travel shots. I probably wouldn't put these in a street photography portfolio, but I think, you know, just going about with your camera and shooting at will, shooting so freely, um, you know, when you're traveling is what makes traveling in and of itself such a rewarding and enlightening experience. I thoroughly enjoyed this trip and I would love to go back again, if only to have some more mango sticky rice. When it comes to street photography, while I was here doing this 24 hours of shooting, I must say I really felt stimulated in a way um, and motivated in a way that I hadn't felt in years. Around each new corner, it felt like there was a moment to be captured and amidst all the chaos that I've spoken about, there was, you know, there were these fleeting moments of beauty and, you know, the people are super friendly. So, you know, there's definitely that humanity that you get uh, while you're out and about shooting street photography and to me that's the magic of shooting street photography as a genre so if you've ever wanted to visit bangkok and you've gotten some value from this video then do be sure to hit like and subscribe as i do post more street photography videos um, every week and i would like to do more povs especially while i'm here in seoul so subscribe for more vi for more videos as i document my journey as a photographer and videographer using the Fujifilm ecosystem, sharing my creative process and showing you uh, the best that South Korea has to offer. And if you're in the market for a Fujifilm camera or you've got your eyes on the X100V and you just can't seem to get one, then click on this video to find out what the logical alternative to this wildly popular Fujifilm camera is. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.